Hello ladies and gentlemen, hope you're having a great day today. Today we are going to take a look at Gears Tactics. Gears Tactics is supposed to be a translation of the Gears of War universe into a turn-based strategy game. Yeah, I had the same look. I mean, how do you combine both extremes, right? Well, apparently by cutting away a lot of the fat that makes Gears so typically slow, and at that, a nice portion of cinematic tension. This replaces the abstract feel of the genre and adds a lot of intense action due to the gore effects and impact of the shots. Forget your XCOM style handful of monsters per situation here. No, no, no. This game overwhelms your squad with dozens of monsters at a time. Top it all off with a high budget this popular franchise is used to, and you get nice looking graphics, details, and lively cutscenes that make this world come alive. Speaking of the world, Gears Tactics is set on a planet that looks oddly familiar to planet Earth, set in the distant future but still 10 years prior to the first Gears of War. This sounds an awful lot like Halo Wars to me. Humanity is at the brink of extinction, caused by the Locust, a monster swarm of deadly alien looking creatures. Humanity is suffering so much that the authoritarian governments, or what's left of them, recently put a doomsday plan in motion that was able to destroy all life in major cities. To a goddamn crisp. This genocide did very little to quell the locust, but it was enough to stop them in their tracks. The largest and acute danger is Ukon, a leader that serves as a genetic engineer of sorts and occasionally unleashes mutated creatures on the human survivors. Spoilers. Don't worry, these are not spoilers, this is literally the first hour of the game. And hither comes Diaz the Samaritan, gun in hand. It is I, his chronicler, who knows best his saga. Now let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Now, his story begins... <clears throat> Sorry, I couldn't help myself again. Diaz is a veteran who gets ordered to eliminate Ukon. During his long journey, he recruits new members, collects new armaments, and leaves a path of blood behind. At the start of every mission, you choose up to four members of your reserves. These members are categorized into five different classes. The Scout, the Support, the Heavy, the Vanguard, and the Sniper. And they can even specialize if you level them up enough. Each class has his own unique playstyle. The support heals and gives your units extra action points. The scout can go invisible, very handy for close encounters. The sniper has excellent accuracy. The heavy can become what they've always dreamed of being, a turret. And the vanguard can instigate a monster with his bayonet. Grab some cover and dig in. Missions are your typical go from point A to point B and set on a small ring landscape littered with debris and destroyed cars that can serve as cover. From the moment you drop, you're instantly beleaguered by the locust. The variety and enemies are nothing to brag about, but there's enough for a 30 hour long campaign. You get your standard drones with machine guns, boomers who are slow but have devastating grenade launchers. Okay, boomer. <laughs> These termite looking fellows. Yeah, you have enough variety here. What makes them interesting though is that the further you progress in this story, the more complex these varieties become. You're constantly required to shift your game plan, and that's a good thing. It keeps you on your toes, it keeps you engaged. It doesn't matter who we are. The best way to engage these new variants are by a tactic called defensive attacking, where your chances of hitting your opponent increases when you're flanking them. But the same is true for your enemies, and leaving your unit flanked can net him some extra air holes. This kind of gameplay rewards you for moving your units as a squad and leaving at least one guy in Overwatch just to stem a bit of the oncoming horde. When you accomplish a mission, your units earn experience points and you can divide the loot you've gathered. Gears Tactics runs a lot faster than most typical games in this genre, mainly because every unit has three action points. This means you can run and shoot twice, or use your last action point to run back into better cover, or use abilities alongside a reload. Everything is possible. Reloading. But let's look at the good parts before we move on. What Gears Tactics does well is putting the player into tough but manageable situations. 
Many enemies have different AI scripts and therefore behave differently. This combination assures the player that the AI will not make it easy for you, even on the easiest difficulty. An enemy with a machine gun will more often than not end his turn in Overwatch, making it difficult for you to reposition your units. Combine this with a boomer lazily listing your way and these creepy crawlies flanking you from the side, you might not know if you'll even survive the next round. But due to the abilities of your units, survival finds a way. Is your scout pinned down by an enemy Overwatch? Cloak becomes your best friend. Creepy crawlies making your life miserable? A well-aimed grenade. Boomer standing in your way. There is always something that'll give you the upper hand. Furthermore, the game succeeds into turning itself in one of the fastest turn-based strategy games on the market. Your enemies are legion, but are significantly weaker than your units which makes you feel like you're directing a squad of heroes. And more fundamentally, your squad's abilities can interact with each other, which leads to strategies you didn't even expect. Execute an enemy and suddenly all your squad mates get an extra action point. The Vanguard can also heal when he kills with his bayonet, if he has the correct loadout. And probably the most powerful of all, a sniper can gain all her action points back if she's the one getting the kill shot. Your enemies are so numerous that ending a turn without an enemy in sight is a rare occurrence, and your large pool of action points ensures that most missions are done within 10 turns. The game doesn't even feel like it slows down when you're back at base. Although there are some negative aspects about the base, we'll get back into that later. Foreshadowing. When it comes to your units leveling up, you can decide what bonuses they get, and these things lead to more powerful bonuses later on like your shots becoming knockdown bullets or more range of motion. But the biggest positive that we can say about Gears Tactics is that it's a game that lets itself be played. After two hours of Phoenix Point or XCOM, I usually need to go and take a breather. I don't feel that when playing Gears Tactics. It's oddly intense, yet relaxing. Now, let's get into the bad part. The gameplay is good, wait for it, but never great. What makes the game so good is also the thing that stops it from getting to the top. And I'm saying this as a fan of the genre. I love XCOM, both the old and the new. I love Phoenix Point, and I also love Gears Tactics. But turn-based strategy games are made for, well, turn-based strategy fans. By taking away all that fat I talked about earlier in the video, the developers also nicked a few organs in the process. When it comes to other turn-based strategy games, you can call them inaccessible, but never shallow. Gears Tactics is the complete opposite. It's shallow, but very accessible. If you don't understand what I'm saying, let me put it this way. XCOM and most other turn-based strategy games are like chess. Gears Tactics is more like checkers. You'll be satisfied with what the campaign has to offer. However, after a few side missions, you'll quickly have the feeling you saw everything this game has to offer. It'll be hard to still get the feeling of surprise after a while. There's also little to no replay value. You quickly understand which bonuses are the best for which classes. And the rush you get from winning a seemingly impossible mission just isn't there. The feeling you get when you kill a difficult enemy, like a Siren in Phoenix Point or a Chrysalid in XCOM, is oddly absent here, mainly due to the fact that the locusts just drop like flies. After the first few intense hours, things quickly become stale and repetitive, even with the varieties and enemies and AI scripts. And at the end, your units and equipments are so strong It'll be hard not to win missions anymore. They start off feeling like heroic units, but end up being gods walking amongst mere locusts. A well thought out sniper can have an upward of 9 action points to spend. That means he can take out 3 or 4 enemies in just one turn. Sure, it looks cool, but you hardly have to fear for their lives anymore. Something you still had late game in XCOM. 
the story is also as brainless as it gets. You can see plot twists coming a mile away. Your Machiavellian boss basically has villain permanently etched on his forehead. And Ukon is as generic as they come. Oh, and don't get me started on how you eliminate him. It borders on frickin' Looney Tunes. The game doesn't let you connect with the world you're fighting for either. Given Gears of War is a long-standing franchise and the lore is well known in the fanbase, but games like XCOM and Phoenix Point give us the feeling that we're liberating parts of the world. Heck, in Mutant Year Zero you can even run around in the world. There's no liberating parts of the world, no fighting for plots of land, no, just missions to find new gears and loot new gear. And this is the primary aspect of Gears Tactics. This is what you're doing most of the time. Even though your units feel like gods at the end, it doesn't feel like you're making any impact on the world. And Ukon just comes into view whenever the story needs him to. He doesn't feel like an urgent threat. The bad stuff aside, I still rate this game a generous 7 out of 10. Gears Tactics is superior to its competitors, but only in some aspects. It's a more stable and polished Phoenix Point, and in XCOM the upgrade system just gets compensated by the tougher enemies you encounter. In Gears Tactics, your units feel like badass motherfuckers from the get-go. And contrary to Mutant Year Zero, you don't constantly feel the need to reload every 5 steps. And because of this, Gears Tactics is a more enjoyable experience. But people looking for depth? strategy or even just the feeling of satisfaction should look elsewhere. Gears Tactics is a game for people who are looking for an easy to get into and accessible turn-based strategy game and might even satisfy the hardcore fans looking for something more relaxing. And as we're wrapping up I would love to point you guys in the direction of our community discord server. We're growing by the day and have a lot of awesome people over there. Link is in the description below. There you will also find a link to our Twitter page where we inform you when we go live, post a new YouTube video or give you guys an update on our bunnies. And lastly you'll find a link to our Twitch page as well where we stream 5 days a week and end our streams with raids on other live streamers. Hope to see you all there. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you. And some secrets also keep people alive. Now do your job. That's awesome.